everybody. It is Tuesday and I have a fun Facebook Live planned for you today. I have been working with the Beauty Abounds stamp set um, for about the last week and I'm a little obsessed with it and I can't wait to show you guys. So I'm going to give everybody a few minutes to jump on. Um, let me see, I didn't even grab my iPad so I can see. Um, if you are joining me, say hello. Oh, and I forgot a prize too. I did that last week. I forgot to tell you what prize I was going to give away. Um, I will give away a prize to somebody who shares this video. Hi again, Alessandra. Hi, Missy. Um, on Friday's live. Um, so over on my group page, I do a longer live on Friday afternoons. I do three projects and I give away prizes. Um, and I will announce the winner for the person who shares this video on Friday. That's kind of confusing. Um, so make sure you join my group page because um, I do a lot more over there than I do over here on my Pink Buckaroo Designs page. Um, when the video is done, I'll come back and I'll add that link at the top if you haven't joined my group yet. And everybody's welcome, even if you just want to come watch. Of course, I don't expect anything from anybody. Hi, Denise. Hi, Christy. Um, I don't expect anybody, anything from anybody. Everybody is welcome to come hop over there and join. Okay, so like I said, it's all about the beauty of bounds. Now, if you have your occasions catalog, you can find it on page 13. And I have to say that these right here are quite spectacular. And I feel like you can't really see them very well in the catalog. So I'm gonna, when I flip the camera over, I'm gonna show you. And somebody said yesterday, aren't those on back order? No, this is not to be confused with the butterfly stuff that is, and it's not even on back order now, it's completely unorderable. We've blown through like six times the amount of punches we normally buy or something crazy. So I'm not touching that, don't worry. We are using Beauty Abounds, okay? All right, so I'm gonna switch you over and show you everything I have down here. And um, I have to tell you guys that I remembered to lock the dogs up today because I am expecting a um, UPS order. Keep your eyes closed. I'm not ready. Busy. Takes me a minute to get everything switched over. I'm expecting an, a very special order from Stamping Up today um, from my lovely UPS man. Um, if you haven't heard, we have new celebration items coming out on February 15th and demonstrators got to pre-order them and so mine are coming today i was hoping they'd be here um before this morning when i did my facebook live with my team but they weren't so they will probably arrive while i'm doing my live here but i put the dogs i gave them a cookie and they went to their bed so <laughs> hopefully we won't have any craziness all right so here's the card we're going to make and i have to tell you i had such a hard time really photographing it um What's really neat about this is the the kind of the glimmery black inside those wings. And I spent a lot of time um, last week just kind of playing with these dies. And I'm gonna show you today how I did this. I Googled lots of different butterfly pictures. Um, and I'm actually even gonna do something different. I would I wanted this part in the middle to be more yellow. So hopefully today I can remember to keep this center part yellow. Um, but we're gonna use an aqua painter and we're gonna do lots of layers of color. And I used our Wink of Stella for that middle. But doesn't that look pretty? Because you know butterfly wings are iridescent. If you've ever touched a butterfly, you know it leaves that stuff on your hands. You're not supposed to do that. But if you accidentally touch a butterfly, you get all that sparkly stuff on your hands. Okay, so here is the set of dies that comes and what what are they called the stamp set is called beauty abounds and that's this these are called butterfly beauty thinlets and here they are and there's a ton of them 20 and i have to use two cards to um to store them and when you first get them you might think you got two of the same but these are actually layers okay one is Thicker, you can see the the wing is much thicker there than it is here. 
but it also has a bunch of little butterflies. I had a project idea that didn't work out <laughs> and I'm not, I'm not giving up yet, but I cut a bunch of these little butterflies in different colors. Um, and it didn't take so long because there's so many of them and I like how they're connected here. You know, it, I feel like I'm less likely to lose that framelit because it's bigger than it would be if it was just that tiny butterfly, but I'm going to keep mulling over that um, idea. This framelit right here matches this one on the stamp set and this one matches this one right here. And then you've got these these uh, more intricate butterflies like this that you can cut out um, and put on your projects. I'm going to show you my stamp club to go scrapbook page this month and you'll see those on there. And then I love this little scroll and little texture stamps. It's a great set. But for right now, we are just going to use the framelits, okay? Let me move my disgusting, dirty iPad cover. Thank you, youngest child, out of the way. My my little one, we her name should be Pig Pen, really. She's <laughs> she's quite the mess. Okay, so we're gonna use the aqua painter and we're gonna do lots of watercolor. And the, the paper that I highly recommend you use when you're doing that is our watercolor paper. It's really good um, and it's gonna hold all that water the best. Now, one thing I'm gonna show you right here is that because of all the intricate dyes, this has lots of places where this paper is gonna stick. And if you saw my picture yesterday, I actually did 40 of these. And while we're waiting for our other one to dry, I'm gonna show you how I put those together. But you've got to really use your dye brush and even your take your pick tool or your piercer um, to make sure you get all those little doodads out. Okay, so we're gonna cut both, uh, both of them with uh, watercolor paper. Joy, you said I haven't wanted that bundle. I'm sure you'll change my mind. <laughs> oh, Joy, I'm glad you're here today. Um, I really do love it. It is a little intimidating. I will give you that. First, when you look, you're like, whoa, that's a lot. Let's make sure it cut. Okay, very nice. We're just gonna lay that one there. Um, so I, what I did is I just started cutting things out. I, wow, this one has little things that I didn't see still stuck from earlier. Um, I just cut a bunch of different colors out and started just kind of combining. And I went to Pinterest and I looked at butterflies. I just typed in butterfly. And I found beautiful um, color combinations for butterflies. And then I just kind of started piecing things together, watercoloring, and um, it just, you know, just things started happening. All right, so this watercolor paper is much thicker than our regular paper. So you're going to probably need to run it through a couple of times like I did. And you know, forwards and backwards, forwards and backwards. And then you wanna get your dye brush. And by the way, all of this is listed on my blog right now. There's a supply list at the bottom. This is one thing I forgot to put on that supply list. It's called the uh, dye brush. It comes with a mat and the brush. Um, and even though this die is really intricate, I have found that it cuts really well. It does take a little of little finagling, especially when you are doing the watercolor paper because it is so thick. But it will be worth it. It will be worth it. So let's do this one. And I actually left. I've I've done this a couple of times, and I left um, these in. Like I didn't pull it all the way out while I was watercoloring it and then worked it out. So you can do it either way. All right, all these little bits and pieces. I'm gonna have them all over you. The one I'll show you in a little while, I actually put adhesive backing on it and it, um, <laughs> those little doodads that come out like this that I'm pulling out right now, all had adhesive on the back of them. So then that they were sticking to me and they were, all over me, everywhere. Okay, so I'm just gonna take a couple of seconds to pop these out. When I cut this out of regular cardstock, they didn't stick in here quite as much, but they do come out. They just need a little persuading. Um, your other tool that will help you with all of this is your take your pick tool. I have really been using my take your pick tool a lot lately. Hello from New York, Stacy. Hello, Lynette, Kimberly. So glad you guys are here. 
All right, Colorado. Ooh, I bet you guys are cold up north, but not as cold as last week, right? Much better. Okay, so here we have two different things. Can you tell the difference? This one's much more delicate and this one's more solid. This one's gonna go on top of that one. And right now it kind of looks like it doesn't really make sense. What I want is for my butterflies to be dark on the outside going to light on the inside. So I am going to grab a paper towel and my aqua painters, and I'm gonna start with my lightest color, which is Daffodil Delight. You know what? No, we're gonna use Pineapple Punch. I really love Pineapple Punch. And I think that's what I use. Now, I don't wanna get this on this scrapbook page that is peeking out over here. Okay, so first, get your Pineapple Punch and one of your blocks and just get some ink on there, okay? Take your Aqua Painter, and it doesn't really matter which one you use, fill it with water, and just give it a little bath. This one right now, I'm doing the solid one, okay? The more the one that's gonna go in the back. I'm just gonna give it a good little soaking. Get all that paper wet. All right, now I'm gonna just pick up this pineapple punch, and I'm just gonna start kind of just laying that color on there. Nothing super fancy, just kind of getting it all over the place. With watercolor, I really don't want a uniform color. I want it to be a little bit splotchy, darker and lighter in some places because that's a watercolor look. Paris, Texas, hello. Hello from San Antonio, Texas. I am right outside of San Antonio in a little suburb called Holotus. We are muggy and humid down here in South Texas. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. All right, so you see, just a quick little, you know, brush it all on. All right, now I'm gonna move that one out of the way and I'm gonna bring over Mango Melody. I am loving Mango Melody lately. I guess I didn't need to squeeze it because I do have a block. Um, Mango Melody is... A really interesting color it's an orangey yellow now I'm gonna go and I want this to be watery I'm gonna actually put some water down there because I don't want it to be too strong and I'm gonna start going on the outsides of the wings okay try to stay on the outside as much as I can because again I want it to be darker on the outside of the wings and lighter as you go in. And use lots of water here. I kind of want it to puddle all the way around. This little guy, I keep forgetting him down here. Okay, a little bit there. All right, now, the problem with water coloring on a live video is that you want to give it some time to dry. And I like to let it dry on its own. I feel like you get a different effect when you let it dry on its own than when you put your heat tool on it. All right, watching you on vacation, well on vacation in Mexico, Karen. Wow, jealous, so jealous. Lucky you, I hope you're having a great time. Okay, so we're gonna move that one, that was the back one. We're gonna move that over here to dry. And we're gonna bring this one in, this is the light one, uh, or the top one. And this time, I'm actually going to start, no, nope, because I wanted to do it a little bit different this time. I'm gonna get that mango, which I just switched those blocks, I guess. And I'm gonna get pineapple punch. Now remember I said, I did all of the outline in dark and I wish that I had left just these center parts of this body light. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna squeeze my aqua painter and just do the very centers of these. Okay. Now also the little antennas, I will show you a little trick for adhering all of that. Okay, now I'm gonna get that mango and really just go to town on the rest of it. Okay, kind of just dabbing that color all over. This is fun, I think, because there's no wrong way. 
And every time you do it, it's gonna look totally different. Every time. And just think of the different color combinations that you could do. Again, go to Google or Pinterest and type in butterfly. Um, I tend to automatically think of the monarch. Um, so that's kind of where I went with this, but with a, another project, a card that we're gonna do on Friday, I found a gorgeous picture of a butterfly that had purples and yellows. I have no idea what it's called, but I used that as my inspiration. So, you know, I mean, you could just sit all day and make beautiful, beautiful, beautiful butterflies in different varying colors. The Aqua Painter is like a paintbrush that has its own water source. You fill up the inside of it with water and then the you just kind of squeeze it every now and then and it turns your ink into paint, which is so fun. I don't know if my mom's on here. Sometimes she's on here. She's a professional artist and I grew up watching her and thinking, no thank you. That's not for me. And she's amazing too. So of course, you know, that's like, okay, definitely not, not doing that too, too hard. She's so good. But as I got older, I have started doing some of this stuff. I mean, obviously not the same caliber as her, but it's fun. And now I kind of get it. Okay, now this is getting super messy. Let's put in a little more here in the middle and we're gonna set this one to dry over here. Look at that, let's dab it. All right, now we're gonna come back to this one and I'm gonna try to hold it. Let's see, no, now we need a little more mango. All right, and I'm just gonna kind of go in here a little bit more. The reason I'm holding it is because I want you guys to be able to really see it. I feel like here, I probably should just grab another grid sheet. I want it to be a little bit darker here on the edges because in a minute, we're gonna come back even with pumpkin pie on that first layer. And so it's gonna be very um, dark. But on here, on the underneath part, we want it to just kind of be ombre, really. You know, just have that light yellow going into light orange, medium orange, dark orange. All right. And this watercolor paper is so strong and sturdy. It really holds up to all of this water. All right, I mean, I seriously could just do this, keep going and going and never stop. But that's looking beautiful. It looks different when I look on my phone, on my camera. I can see where I need to add a little bit more. Okay, now let's set that one aside. Now, I think I am gonna just get some new paper. Just so you guys can really see what I'm doing, the contrast. So the next color I'm using is pumpkin pie. It's a darker orange than our mango that we've been using. Okay, but I do wanna add a little bit more yellow there in the middle. So let's just go back here. This is our uh, pineapple punch. All right, like that. There we go. Okay, now it's time for the dark. Pumpkin pie, let's see, we don't need this guy. I'm gonna move him up here. Bring the pumpkin pie. All right, now our pumpkin pie is our darkest color. Ooh, it's sleeting in Iowa, Paula. I'm so sorry to hear that, yuck. But I would say that that's probably an improvement from the polar vortex. Okay, can you guys see what's happening here with this dark? This pumpkin pie, I'm just going right on the outside edges and it's much darker and giving us one more layer in our ombre effect. Okay, round the edges. Mm, that's so beautiful. Ah, Sharon, you're coming to San Antonio for on stage. Great. Um, you guys, if you're a demonstrator and you're coming to San Antonio in April for Stampin' Up's on stage 
event. It's kind of like our convention, if you don't know. Um, I, my friend Kay Cogville and I are hosting a, an event the day before, a full day stamping event, stamping and training. Um, we reached our limit within about, I don't know, 72 hours, but we have been able to add in some more seats. Um, if you're interested in that, if you're a demonstrator and you're coming to San Antonio, please send me a message and I can give you the details on that. Okay. So here we go. Here's the top layer, very pretty. And here's the bottom layer. Now, what I'm gonna do, I keep wanting to wipe all that away and I don't think it's going to wipe away. I am going to use my fine tip glue pen. Typically, I would set this down in front of my little fan that I have and I would let it dry for probably 20 minutes um, to give it some time for all of that that water to really dry. And then, then I might even add in another layer of color because the more color layers you put on there, oh, you know, I was gonna show you something before I do this, the more vibrant it's going to, to be. One thing I discovered this week is that you should cut off all the antennas on your bottom layer. All right, just cut them off because it's just gonna be hard to get them all to align. This paper is very wet. I'm not sure we're gonna be able to get these to it here, but we're gonna try and even cut off these little things down here at the bottom of the wings, okay? There, now when you adhere this, those fine little delicate pieces from the top will be in, that, in, the, in its place of the ones that you just cut off. And um, it, you won't even know that you cut them off. All right, so I'm going with my fine tip glue pen. You guys know that the fine tip glue pen and I walk a, a very fine line of love and hate, but this kind of project, you gotta use it. Um, in a minute, I'm gonna show you on a different project how I use the multi-purpose adhesive sheets, um, which I love, but with watercolor uh, paper and water, it just, that's not gonna, that's not gonna work. So, Put a bunch of dots, don't squeeze, just use what's coming out of there. And then very carefully, you're gonna lay this down on top of that bottom piece. Look at that, see you can really see, once you get these guys together, you can really see that difference, that variation from light to dark. So beautiful. All right, so I'm not sure how much this is gonna stick down, but we're gonna give it a few minutes. What I like to do is take my giant block. Can you see how it's covered in adhesive? Because that's pretty much all I've ever used my giant <laughs> clear block for, um, especially now that we have the Stamparatus. Um, and so I just set that on top like that and um, give it, a, you know, like 10 minutes. But this, we probably won't give it that long today, but, what we're gonna do is we're gonna move it out of the way. So while it has a few minutes to dry, we can do a couple other things. Okay, I'm just gonna move it over here. And let's clean up a little bit. Oh, mess. That piece of tape there. Okay, so I mentioned to you guys that I was making these this week for my stamp club to go. And if you're in my stamp club to go and you wanna be surprised, close your eyes, okay? I actually showed this on my blog. I didn't even realize I had done that, but it's on my blog a couple of weeks ago. Um, this is the card that I'm making for my stamp club. My stamp club to go has, three, they get three projects. They get a card and a 3D, and then their third project is either a scrapbook page or an alternate card. So here's the scrapbook page that they're getting, and you can see how they're similar, right? And on the inside, let's see, is this the one that I finished? Um, no, this isn't the one, but well, this is kind of like, I changed it up a little bit, um, but I try to finish the insides of these as well on the, the third project. But anyway, here's that little die, the little framelit that I showed you that cuts out the little outline and those little, oh, what are they called, you guys? Um, bouquet, isn't that what it's called? The bouquet or bokeh technique, those little stamps. And the sentiments, the words in the set are really cool and I think that they're great for scrapbooking too. Um, this one says, our friendship isn't one big thing, it's a million little things. And then this one says, a friend is someone who chooses you out of 
um, out of a whole world of people. Isn't that neat? So th this is probably more of a typical use for this um, framelit set. And here's what I did. I put the multi-purpose adhesive sheet on the back of the black piece. And like I said earlier, the problem that happens is that then all these little tiny doodads have adhesive on the back of them. And I find that I can get more of them out if I turn it upside down on my dye brush and mat, but I just take it and pull it off and a lot of them will just stick to that paper. Okay. So yes, I did a ton of these and it was worth it because they are beautiful. But you can see all these little, little pieces were sticking to my pants, sticking to my shirt, they were in my hair. Um, there's a few of them. And another thing that I did, let me just show you. I have all kinds of unsanctioned, unsanctioned tricks, you guys. So I'm sure this is, you would never see this on a Stampin' Up! video. But if you take, if you have a little cluster like that, just stick it down like on the table or paper and look, they all come out. <laughs> I know. But then you gotta scrape them away. But that's okay. All right, so then, oops, let's cut off the antennas here. This is how I discovered that it's easier to adhere these when you cut off the antenna and the, the little heads of the butterflies. I know it's awful. Okay, so snip them off. Snip off the, the little end right here. And then I like to line it up starting in the middle. Oh my goodness, I have ink all over my hands. So start right here in the middle and line that up and then just kind of work out from there. Okay, just kind of lining it up. And the multi-purpose adhesive sheet that I used um, is not is a little bit forgiving. You know, if you stick it down and it's crooked like this, you can peel it back up. And then I put that big um, clear block on top of these two. Once I've got them in place, I just set that clear block on there to just kind of give it some time to be totally flat and that adhesive to really kind of get stuck. But there, that's pretty, isn't it? Less complicated than what we're doing in today's project, but still very beautiful. All right, let's put the rest of this card together. Um, let's do the inside first. I did, let's see, did a little stamping. It's a thick whisper white card base, then a four and a fourth no, four by five and a fourth piece of basic black and then a three and three fourths by five inch whisper white. It's the same on the front and on the inside, okay? Then you're going to want to use stays on black and we use stays on because it will not smear when we watercolor it. Memento for your blends, stays on for your watercoloring. Oh wait, not done. Let's do one of these little butterflies here one of them up here, and then the sentiment is, thanks. I really like a card that's fancy on the inside. I don't do it very often, um, but I do really like it. It really kind of fancies things up. Okay, let's start with Pineapple Punch. Let's see, oops, wrong one little bit of pineapple punch that's in the lid there. I'm just gonna do the center of those flowers. And maybe the butterfly, he can be pineapple punch too. Okay, then a little pumpkin pie on the outsides, blending that pineapple punch up into those petals. I probably used a little bit too much, that's okay. And then I didn't want to bring in another color, but when you have leaves, you pretty much have to bring in another color. It has to be green. All right, so let me run my aqua paint clean over here on my paper towel. When you're switching colors, you really need to squeeze it and run it clean. And then I'm gonna press on the bottom of my ink pad to put a little bit of that ink in the top. This is Pear Pizzazz. Uh-oh, I forgot that other butterfly, didn't I? Hmm, we'll, we'll come back. We'll come back. All right, you guys, 
I've got to bring my iPad back over here. I forgot you guys were, were there. <laughs> Just kidding. I knew you were there. All right. You know what's funny? I've been listening to um, audiobooks um, during while I work a lot lately. And uh, while I'm doing this, I can remember exactly what part of the book I was listening to while I was painting or coloring this last time. Isn't that funny how our brains do that? You can, just by looking at the card, I, I think about that part of the book that I was listening to. That happens a lot. Or if I was watching a movie or, you know, having a conversation, I think about that the next time I look at that card. Okay. I'm getting carried away. I need to stop adding too much. Let's do a, let's do this guy in Mango Melody up here. Boy, I look like an artist with all this ink all over my hands. Okay, now we're ready. We're gonna put a little bit of, oh, where did my adhesive go? Right here. I'm gonna put a little bit of that Botanical Butterflies Designer Series paper along the bottom. This is my favorite of all of it. I'm sure, Oh, I just made that crooked. Let me fix that. This is, that's my favorite pattern of the whole set. I'm sure you guys know I'm obsessed with black and white, checkered. All right, so we're gonna frame this on a piece of basic black. And then we're gonna put that on the inside, like that. And then on the outside, and I meant, what I meant to do, and I recommend you guys, we're putting this whole piece right here on the top. But really, we're only going to see the edges. So get your rectangle framelits and cut that out. So you'll save that part for another project. I meant to do that and I forgot. That's a good way to get more out of your paper. But I do have quite a bit of this paper, so I think I'm okay. All right, so see, you could take your rectangle framelit and cut the center of that paper, that DSP out, and you wouldn't be feeling like you're using so much of it. I forgot to do that. All right, so there's that. Now let's see what our butterflies look like. They're still a little soggy, but that's okay. I want to take my Wink of Stella and I'm going to need another piece of grid paper. Goodness, going through quite a bit. I'm going to take my um, Wink of Stella and do this. Now I'm gonna show you guys something else that you can do. Some of you will not like this at all, but I'm gonna show you. Your Wink of Stella is like an aqua painter, okay? You can use it like an aqua painter. You can take it and you can dip it in your ink. I know, how many of you are gasping? And go along the edges, and that's what I did. Make it a little bit darker with your Wink of Stella. And your Wink of Stella will run clean again. Okay, now some of you are gonna say that is awful, don't ever do that. But I think it's worth it. And it might stain your Wink of Stella tip, but you can get your Wink of Stella clear. Oh, I see you guys like that. I dare you to try it. I dare you to take your clear Wink of Stella in the ink and then don't call me if something happens <laughs> just order another one no I'm just kidding it will it will run clear you will be able to get all the ink off okay again I'm I'm getting carried away I can't stop I just want to keep adding and adding and adding and adding and adding okay thank you for the hearts and the likes I love it okay let's see look ah oh, see look I just cleaned it there's no color left. Stop panicking. I know you're panicking. Okay, I wouldn't steer you wrong. Well, on purpose, I guess. <laughs> now I've got a few pieces left that I haven't gotten out, so I'm gonna very carefully do this because um, my cards, I mean, my watercolor paper is wet now, so I gotta be careful not to really tear it. Um, but when it's dry, they just pop right out. I didn't wanna take the time a minute ago. I wanted to get started on the watercolor. Okay, we're gonna leave it like that since we're doing a video. Now, I'm gonna put it on here. Look how gorgeous that is. It just popped right off of that card, off of that black. And we're gonna once again use my frenemy, 
the fine tip glue pen. Oh, Betty, you're gonna give it a try? Good. It'll squeeze, you know, that stuff squeezes out of the um, Wink of Stella, just like the Aqua Painter. All right, we're gonna give it some dots all the way around. A few more dots. And I'm trying not to squeeze it. It's my tendency to squeeze this thing. And then I get giant blobs and then, and then we have, then we have to put the fine tip glue pen away for a while. <laughs> okay, so let's get it and put it right down there. You kind of have to really finagle it so that it's not sticking out on the top or the sides or whatever. And then again, I would grab my giant clear block or a book, you know, be careful though if you use a book because you can see some of my adhesive and stuff sticks to it. So don't use anything that, you know, would, you would be upset if it got adhesive on it or whatever. Could you spray it with shimmer paint too? Mary, yes, fancy, now we're really talking. I love shimmer paint and spraying it with shimmer paint would be really nice. I did even think about flicking it with some gold, but I restrained myself. I was like, stop, this is already too much. Okay, last thing is you're gonna take your Wink of Stella and you're just gonna color those black pieces on the inside and that's really what makes this just look stunning that you know that shimmery look of a butterfly's wing that is just so neat oh, I think I hear UPS they're coming with my new products so next Friday I believe is the 15th and next Friday I will be showing you, actually all of next week, I will be showing you the new, the second release of Celebration, the three new products. Those will be my focus of the week next week. So make sure you come back and see what I do. We've got some really cool things. There'll be free items that'll be added to our current list of free items. Okay, there we go. I did not get all my doodads out. I'll have to go back and get those out. Now one last thing. I really, they are locked up. It sounds like they're in the room, but they are locked up. I really um, didn't want to put anything else on the front of this card because I wanted this, this watercolor, you know, layered thing to really pop and really be the focal point. I didn't want to take away um, anything from it. So all I did was I just added a bow, a twine bow to the fold. And that's it. So what do you guys think? Are you are you up for the challenge of trying the watercolor? Look how different they look with that yellow in the middle. Hmm, now that I see it, I think I might like the dark. Well, no, I don't know. They're both really cool. And I really wanna try some other colors. All right, you guys, I hope you'll give it a try. I also hope that you'll come over and join my Facebook group if you haven't already, because on Friday, two o'clock central, we have Let's see, which one do I wanna show you? I have three more projects, but I don't wanna give them all away. Maybe I'll just show you this real quick. <gasps> okay, that's all the sneak peek you're getting. You gotta come back Friday to see three more Beauty Abounds projects. Uh, make sure you hop over to my blog. I'll add the link up at the top. When I'm done, uh, you can go over and find out uh, more specifics and see the photos up close. All right, you guys, have a wonderful rest of your week, and I will see you on Friday at 2 o'clock over at Pink Buckaroo Stampers Group. Thanks so much, everybody. Bye-bye.